Hello everyone, I'm Victoria Borneman, the Saul Lando Multimedia Fellow at the Institute for Policy Studies. Today I'm here with Alyssa Aquino, who's going to talk to us about social media strategies. Hi, I'm Alyssa, and I'm the Communications Fellow at the Institute for Policy Studies. I'm here to tell you why hashtags are important. Um, basically, how to plan your social media strategy for any event or that you're trying to throw, or any information you want to get out there. Slideshow done. Um, but I'm here to tell you how to plan your social media campaign. If you are trying to get some type of information out there, if you're trying to promote an event, you will have to have a social media campaign. And how that event looks, and how that campaign looks like, I'm going to guide you through how that campaign will look like and sort of the tools you can use to like have a very successful social media strategy. And then, next slide. Okay, the important things for planning your social media campaign can be summarized. Thus, uh, first you need to know what, when, and who. What is this campaign event? Uh, what are the goals of the social media campaign? When will this event take place? And who's the audience? And then you have to develop and plan this, um, the campaign. Uh, you have to have daily content. You're going to have graphics and videos. You're going to have hashtags. And you're going to have links. And then the execution, uh, basically the scheduling, the social media advertising, and your social media kit and sharing that kit. And then finally, like after your event or after whatever you're advertising for, you're gonna have to review sort of like best practices. Uh, what went well? Did you meet your goals? Um, if you didn't meet your goals, like how do you revise and move on? What, when, and who? What is this campaign or event? Um, creating campaigns and events can be exciting. Um, however, like when you plan it, you need to sum it up in one or two sentences and that those two sentences should be the goal of your event. And after that, uh, once you have a goal and purpose for your event, you need to have like a social media campaign and to have a social media campaign. You need to know what the goals of your campaign are. Uh, sometimes the goals of your social media campaign and your event or campaign like can be the same thing. Uh, for example, if you were to have a, uh, an event that is basically a fundraising type thing, your social media campaign could be built on trying to get people to donate. However, for some other things, um, like you could have an event that's trying to push a certain public policy initiative, but your social media campaign could be focused on trying to push a report on the so, like public policy initiative you're trying to push. Um, it can be the same thing, it can be different, uh, but you really need to have the goals in mind of like your event and the goals of your social media strategy. Uh, when will this event take place? Uh, once the date has been set for a campaign or event, uh, you need a timeline for the social media campaign. Some timelines can be longer uh, due to the size of the campaign event. Um, the longest cam social media campaign that I know of is a campaign for an election. Uh, which is roughly eight months to a year. However, sometimes if the event is small, if it's say open to anyone, the social media campaign could be two weeks. Um, but the longer the event or the bigger the event, like the more time you need to give for a fundraising event that the Institute for Policy Studies puts on every year, the LM Awards, uh, usually the social media campaign lasts about three to four months because this event isn't open for the public. We first need to send out invitations. Uh, we need to see who's coming. Uh, sometimes there'll be changes in the guests. Um, basically, once you figure out what your event is or what you're trying to make a campaign for, like give yourself a timeline. And you need to know who your audience is. All events and like all social media campaigns have a target audience and you need to highlight who this audience is because this will really influence how you're gonna go about trying to accomplish the goal of your campaign. Like if you have a young audience, like they go on very different social media outlets and they use it at very different times, say than an older audience. Um, if you have an older audience, how they communicate online will be very different from a younger audience and et cetera, et cetera. Tip number one, time is of the essence. Get started. The earlier you promote the event and the earlier you get a hashtag, the greater your chances are for success. You can push that heavily the more time you have. Development and planning. Um, 
for a social media campaign, you're going to have to have daily content. And when you're developing the content, you need to be aware of the post criteria for each platform. A post for Twitter has about 140 characters. So it's going to be look, so in a post for the same event on Twitter will be very different for a Facebook event. Uh, for example, because of Twitter, you have like a very set character amount, like limit, uh, you're going to have a very short post. But for Facebook, you can just go on and on, use complete sentences. Um, your link's going to look different. Um, second, when you're developing, like you're going to have to have your graphics and video. Yeah. Second, uh, and it's also good when you're posting to have graphics, images, videos. Um, it can really increase engagement. Studies show that four times as many consumers would prefer to watch a video about a product than to read about it. Um, people following directions with text and illustrations do 323% better than people following directions without illustrations. These are just things to keep in mind. Okay, and now we get to the title of this event, hashtags. A hashtag is created by putting a pound sign in front of a word or words without spaces. It's used as a label for social media sites that makes it easier to find information with a theme or specific content. Your hashtag should be short. Um, it should be simple, it should connect with your campaign and event. The longer the hashtag, the less characters you have on say Twitter. So this should not be a run on sentence hashtag. Also do not go crazy with hashtags on Twitter and Facebook. With Twitter, it just takes up space no one really likes seeing hashtags on Facebook. Um, if it's Instagram, go hashtag crazy. Um, and a really useful tool that we have uh, for later is Keyhole. Keyhole is basically Twitter, Twitter analytics, only really analyzes like each post. And it sort of like, and it only tracks the posts. It doesn't also analyze, say, the people who are sharing your posts or sharing your tweets. Uh, Keyhole, however, is like a tool that allows you to track a hashtag. So not only do you see where these hashtags winds up, but you also see the people who post or tweet with the hashtag. Fortunately, it, the free trial only allows you one hashtag that you can follow. Uh, you can pay, I believe, $165 to track like three hashtags, which kind of speaks of how important it is to, like track say where your hashtags wind up. Um, if you choose to like, go the route of paying for it, um, Keyhole can be a very powerful tool. Um, if not, try the free trial and kind of play with like what hashtags work or don't work. Second, um, for links, when you're creating a post, you want to help guide the audience to information about the campaign or event using links. Um, but in some social media platforms, Posts with links, like the entire link shows up. So for Twitter, it could take up many, many more characters. And if you have 140 characters, having a very huge link is a bit of a problem. So you can actually, there's a tool you can make your link shorter by and it's called bit.ly.com. Basically you just put like a link in there and it shortens it to like max 20 characters. Tip number two, reach out. Uh, social media is great to start a conversation. Uh, you could reach out to attendees. You can reach out to speakers, donors, or supporters to get them excited about the campaign or event. And also, I guess, to remind them that it's happening. Uh, basically, use social media also to engage the people you want to engage and want to show up. OK, execution, scheduling. Creating a social media schedule is the best way to stay on top of your social media campaign. Get to live, like, if you have a social media campaign, like you say Twitter, limit the amount of promotional content to just 20%. So say each day for Twitter, I would put in, say, 10 tweets. Two of those tweets would be tweets, like, that directly ask someone to do something. Like, a promotional tweet would be, please come to this event. Please RSVP here. If I were to have two of those, then the other eight should be things like sharing a news article, random commentary, like do not make someone 
feel like they're going on your social media page and that they're constantly constantly being solicited. Um, and also, like, there, there are also other tools to schedule, like Hootsuite and TweakDeck. Um, depending on your audience, there's a certain key time that your audience will be online and actively sharing things. Um, and sometimes that time, like, say I'm a millennial, I'm probably most likely to be online, like, late at night. And sometimes you're just not working at that time. Sometimes you're not available. Hootsuite or TweakDeck are cool tools to, like, allow you to schedule like when you want something to go up so you don't actively have to press. So you don't actively have to like, be on your computer at 11 p.m. trying to reach a certain audience. <clears throat> and on the right is a little graphic and sort of like different social media platforms and like how often you should post on them. I just got some extra information. Say for LinkedIn, like an area where you use LinkedIn would honestly let me think about this. I think something I asked him about. On your right is a little graphic on different social media platforms and how often you should post on them. Um, just for some extra information, like also these different media platforms, in addition to knowing how often you should post on them, what you use will like also depend on your audience and what type of event you're trying to schedule, say for LinkedIn. I wouldn't post that often on it and I would post for an event or some kind of campaign that is meant to reach professionals. So maybe an event on like networking or an event where you're trying to solicit, like um, where you're trying to fundraise just because that crowd is probably a bit more professional corporate. Um, they would be going on this platform to try and find events like that would like help them with their jobs. Um, Pinterest, um, if your event is catered towards women, uh, if it's an issue that has to deal with, say, women's rights, uh, so it's an event that's, like, catered to women, Pinterest is, studies show it's, like, 80%, like, women, 80% of the Pinterest users are women, you would use Pinterest if your audience is disproportionately women. Um, this goes back to audience again, however much you plan an event, you really need to nail down who your audience is. And if you really want to reach more people, you have the option to social media advertise. So basically you just pay a media outlet more and it will boost who sees your content. Um, if you plan to use this tool, um, say if you are, if you have a lot of funds, then go crazy with your social media advertising. However, you don't have enough, I'd say use it very, very discreetly, not discreet. If you don't have enough funds or if you're very limited in how much money you can spend on social media advertising, I suggest using like paying um, for content. Use it for events where you're fundraising so that you can like break even as this does get expensive. And when you're promoting your social media campaign, make sure you share a summary of the campaign and sort of like the social media posts that you're going to put on all your social media platforms to your network. So this would be your supporters, staff of your organization, donors, social media influencers, and say the actual participants in the event. So if it's an event, like the person who's speaking, like make sure to send them a social media toolkit. This will be the graphics that you're planning on putting on like, your Twitter. This would also be actual Twitter posts that you have planned. Plan your Twitter posts or Facebook posts in advance. The goal of this thing is to make it as easy as possible for other people to share your event. Um, if you have a famous speaker or someone with a lot of followers um, attending your event, it's easier to get them to agree to like share something if they don't have to do anything. So give them all the information. And this is an example of like the social media toolkit that we sent out through the release of a report a year ago. And as you can see, we have the entire tweets on there. If you click on the link, it'll actually also show you all the graphics from the report. And tip number three, create challenges. The best way to get audience engagement is sort of just to get, get them to do something. Um, if you want to promote events or a part of your social media strategy can be like contests, 
interesting facts. Um, I think for one event, for the social media strategy, we had this like fun facts. Like if you can answer this question, the first, if you're first to answer this question, and I think it was who hosted this event 10 years ago, someone got discounted tickets to um, a private event or um, their other share. <clears throat> but like contests, sharing interesting facts are other shareable and like giving other shareable content are great ways to promote your event. Um, it's also a good way to get a sneak peek of the event to get people more interested. Okay. And lastly, once your event is done and your social media campaign has reached its natural end, uh, it's now time to actually review what's going on. So I gave you the name of Keyhole, which is a great place to do, track your hashtags. Um, but other ways, or sort of just like when you're reviewing your analytics, you need to ask, did you reach your social media campaign goal? Um, but then you have to ask like, how did the social media campaign improve or harm the campaign or event? Um, you have to be really honest about this here. Um, was the engagement different on each social media platform? This could go back to audience, uh, audience uh, whether or not you targeted your audience correctly. Um, so like, or maybe like, oh my God, <laughs> just like rambling. Was the engagement different on each social media platform? And this honestly goes back into audience, whether or not like you reached the right audience or you got, or your event or your social media campaign targeted the right audience or whether or not something is a bit more popular on Twitter or like read better on Twitter than it did on Facebook. Um, which type of posts got the most attention? Were they the graphics? Were they text? Were they anything for like a contest or a giveaway? And how much of the support of the campaign event came from the social media campaign? This can go into like say whether or not the goal of your campaign, your social media campaigns to like push membership or push more people into the event. Um, sort of like it's really ah, it was yeah. Sorry. And could you do things differently next time? Did certain words or graphic just not pop with a certain audience? Um, did a certain social media platform just not work for you? Um, did you need more time trying to push something? For events, a great way to find out how social media events, how social media, for events, a great way to find out how social media helped is to provide guests with a survey. On the survey, ask how they found out about the event. If they found out through your Facebook page, your Twitter, or Instagram, great. Like your social media campaign reached and engaged the right audience. If they found out through a friend, that's also great because they did what you wanted them to do. Um, but at that point, try and rethink how your social media strategy could reach more people. Any questions? Okay. This is really fast. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys so much for watching Media Strategies and Communications. So we're really lucky to have her here. Um, feel free to submit any of your questions and we'll try to get back to all of you. Yep. Thanks for bearing with me. <laughs> and I hope your social media campaign goes great. Choose your hashtag carefully. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. How long was that?